Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me, especially if you're tuning in today, which should be Christmas Day. So, Merry Christmas to everybody and to everybody else that doesn't celebrate. Everybody, happy holidays. I hope everybody out there is doing wonderful. And in today's What's on the Wall is a special one. And it's probably going to be a fairly long one because we have a few of them to cover. Today is all about the lunchbox. So, the Tamiya lunchbox came out on the CW01 chassis in June of 1987 on part number 58063. And thanks to the wonderful RC Elf, I have one. Now, this is a 1987 release, or around 1987, release of the lunchbox. So, this is part number 58063. This one he gifted me as a new inbox kit. And it is going to stay a new inbox kit. I am not building this. This one is my little time capsule from 1987. Now, we do have a quite a few on the wall behind me, so I'm going to start pulling them down one at a time and talking about them. But, Elf, thank you so much for this wonderful kit. I adore it. And I never thought, you know, something as goofy as a lunchbox would be one of my top favorite RCs of all time. But it certainly has turned into it. And these things are a ton of fun. Before I get into everything on the wall, let's go through a little bit of history real quick. So, like I said, the CW1 chassis started with the lunchbox in 87. Now, also in 87, they came out with the Midnight Pumpkin at around about the same time. I'm not sure the exact release date on that, but the Midnight Pumpkin shares the exact same chassis, just a different body shell. A good while later, um, they also came out with the Mitsubishi Montero Wheelie uh, in 2011. And, you know, that was another kind of comical series form. Then in 2012 and running into 2013, um, they released the Unimog 406 wheelie, which, you know, I didn't realize that that was on the CW1 chassis at the time, and I really kind of want one of those. <laughs> they look pretty neat. But they came out in multiple colors. They had green, blue, yellow, red, and orange. And I think orange was the last one that actually came out in 2013. Um, but they had a long series of those. Um, there's also quite a few variants of the lunchbox. So there was a gold edition that came out in 2011. There was the black edition, which came out in 2013, which is still available. They came out with the limited blue edition in 2013, which of those special editions, the blue one is kind of the coolest. Um, they came out with the red one in 2019. Now the blue, the red, and the gold all came with the metallic wheels on them. So the blue one had the blue metallic and red metallic and gold metallic, all that. Um, the black one just has black plastic wheels. They're not black metallic. So the gold, the red, and the blue all came out with metallic wheels. The rest came on just regular plastic. Um, there's also a mini lunchbox, which is actually on a different chassis. It's the SW01. Now, that came out in 2019 as the regular uh, lunchbox and in 2022 they came out with a gold edition as well um, still haven't gotten one of those yet but let's start pulling some off the wall and we'll talk about them individually all right so the first up is the retro build of the lunchbox so when RCL sent me that wonderful uh, new inbox kit I just couldn't bring myself to building it um, so what I did is I went out and I bought a re-release kit so the original and the re-release kits don't have many variations to them so the variations between them are minor um, just some of the ball ends and the way the knuckles the, the front steering arms are um, they upgraded those to instead of a screw in single side um, post they went through the through style so it actually bolts up through and captures the whole um, steering arm to keep those from breaking off so easily um, and basically just you know doesn't come with a mechanical speed controller. It comes with the <laughs> electronic speed controller. So really not a whole lot of difference. You know, this kit and the original kit are about the same. Now, I did go out. This has the mechanical speed controller. This has all the kind of original old parts. It actually has all the old gold color screws on it. So I went out and got as much old stuff as I could that needed to be changed over and updated. Well, reverted <laughs> to old school. Um, it's running an old um, Futaba radio system in it. Well, actually, I think this is still running the um, Lynx radio system in it. So this is still running the old um, high-tech radio system in it and mechanical speed control in here. So it's about as old school as I could get. Um, it does have, you know, a more modern servo, but it's still just a generic servo uh, running the speed controller and the um, steering. Uh, but, you know, 
everything on here is as old school as I could get it to make it work. So this one was painted up in the Tamiya yellow as it calls for in the manual. Um, it has the reproduction decals from MCI on there. So it actually has the correct address and everything on the rear with the correct phone number. Um, all that stuff is, was updated later on in the re-release. They changed the address, they changed the phone number. Um, but pretty much that's about all they really changed on the decal. So I just made those updated. Now, if you guys saw, I did forget to paint the red in around the taillights. I'll get to that. <laughs> but everything else on here is absolutely perfect. Um, it's been run. Um, it's not going to run very often. But, you know, this was kind of a tribute to that original new inbox kit. So let's pull down another one. All right, so this is kind of the fun basher one. Um, now, this one you guys may recognize as the speedrun truck. It, it, it is. Um, basically, I took my fun, my original re-re uh, re -re that I had that I had painted up in the original colors, and we turned that into the speedrun car. So did a whole lot of modifications, put a crazy fast motor in here. We got this thing up to 48 miles an hour, which was crazy. Um, I made this body specifically for the speed run and because I already have the yellow one, I've shelved the other yellow body for now and this is my fun run body. You know, I'm not going to really, it's already got scratches on it, so I'm not too worried if this one gets scarred up and beat up while I'm out driving it around. This was just made for fun and basically made for that speed run challenge. Now, because it made the speed run challenge, it does have some upgrade parts. It has the Ampro Engineering front suspension arms on it um, that actually gives it an upper link. So you can actually compress the front end and the tires don't go YMCA on you. Um, they actually just, you know, go up and down. Um, it's got the upgraded wheelie bar, upgraded suspension mounts. Um, this has a, it now has the Tamiya GT tuned motor in it. Um, during the speed runs, it had a 4,000 kV uh, hobby wing system in it. Um, but yeah, this one is just for running around, bashing around in the yard, making myself smile. These things, you know, the instant you squeeze the trigger, smiles happen. Uh, they're some of the funnest trucks to run around. Now, this one is fairly modified. It doesn't wheelie as much as it did. I actually have a good bit of weight in the front um, to try to keep it a little bit more to where I can actually take it out on the racetrack and run it around, um, you know, be able to bash around the yard, and it's not constantly riding wheelies. Um, but overall, it's a great little fun platform and this one is you know the dedicated fun haver bash it up um run it around and, and have a good time with it so let's pull down some of the other custom ones so this one is one of my most recent ones this is the transcon medevac from the cannonball run uh, movies uh so basically ran mci decals around it to give it the look custom paint job light bars front and rear because those that van did have dual um light bars, uh, running the black wheels on it because in the movie, um, it started out with hubcaps and by the end of the movie, they were down to just the black steel wheels. So we're running the black edition, um, plastic wheels on here. Um, I did not rust these up. I was going to, but you know, it looks kind of the part as is, you know, vans weren't, you know, uh, an ambulance wouldn't be running around on nasty, crusty, rusty wheels. So I just left them black, but you know, it has the cool decals all the way around it. Um, you know, even on the front has the ambulance written backwards for the rear view mirror and everything. So in this one, we're running all stock electronics. It came with the Hobby Wing ESC, so it has a 1060. It has a stock motor in it. Um, and, you know, it has been run. It's not going to, again, the custom ones don't get run a lot. But this thing is more than enough fun on a stock motor. Front end comes right up, bounces all around, just bobbles and bumbles around like it's supposed to. And, you know, kind of that's most of the charm of these is watching it just, you know, lumber around and be all silly. Um, but, you know, this one was a fun one. Uh, not terribly challenging, you know, just getting these paint lines nice and straight. So on these, I actually did do the backgrounds in the, for the windows um, in paint. So I used my vinyl cutter to cut out the masks. I painted this top section, the gunmetal first and then did the same thing on the rear, painted all the way around the gunmetal, and then taped off those with my vinyl cutter vinyl, and then painted over it with the orange, and then when it peeled it off, you know, you have nice, you know, kind of like metallic-y, uh, almost smoked out windows like you would have on the back of one of these vans. So another fun build. So let's take a look at another one. So we have another orange van. Now this orange van is very important because Rolling Thunder 
was a, an actual monster truck way back in the early 80s. Uh, was hand built, and you know, I'll put the link up here. And also, there's another great video by Thad from Iowa RC Budget Bashers um, that he built uh, a Rolling Thunder van too. He has a little bit more history on his. But basically, guy just decided, hey, I'm going to make a monster truck, and he built this crazy monster truck out of a Dodge van, and you know, it was the inspiration for the, to me, a lunchbox. Um, if you look at the Rolling Thunder and the front and the rear bumpers and the side pipes and everything about that ginormous monster truck, you know, it is this right here. <laughs> so we actually have working uh, light pod up top. And again, MCI decals for all the work around here. Now, I know Thad um, actually had Stefan over Accessible RC make his decals. And I think Stefan's decals actually are clearer and better looking than the MCI ones. Um, the MCI ones are a little bit muddy uh, looking up here in the Rolling Thunder area. Uh, but overall, you know, it looks great. And it's a tribute to the actual inspiration of the Tamiya Lunchbox. So we painted the wheels orange to match. Um, and again, this one this one actually has a Sport Tune motor in it. Uh, so it is a little bit more peppy. Um, but again, doesn't run that often. But it is cool looking with the lights. Oh, and the lights on the Tucson one light up as well. You know, it actually does the woo 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 all that. One that I had to do as soon as I decided that, you know, we were going to do a custom lunchbox was the Mystery Machine. Um, my daughter and I watched so much Scooby-Doo when she was growing up. You know, it was one of her favorite cartoons for a long time. And we just sat there and watched Scooby-Doo after Scooby-Doo after Scooby-Doo. We both loved it. Um, so, yeah, this one was another one from MCI. They sell the decals. I know you can get them all over the place. Um, but I think MCI's are some of the better looking ones. Again, painted the wheels, the green to match, the decals. And also, one thing that you don't see on a lot of them is this actually has the spare tire cover on the front of the van like the Mystery Machine did. Now, the Mystery Machine was a different van overall, so, you know, not 100%, you know, dead on accurate. And the blue I picked was a little too blue. It should be a little bit more of a greener blue, but, you know, we were just standing in the paint aisle going, no, 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 I think this one's it. <laughs> so you know it's a little blue blue uh, but overall i think it looks awesome uh this one's running all stock electronics in it but it's ready to go anytime i want to take it out and this one actually does drive really well um because the way i did this um front tire cover it added a little bit of weight so it pulls wheelies pretty easily but it doesn't fly it up so fast that it wants to you know hit the roll bar and you know start doing that it actually does really nice controlled wheelies whatever amount of weight i put up here was like dead on the right amount to you know get some nice long controlled wheelies out of it but, you know, again, really nice looking truck. Um, came out super well. I'm super happy with it. And, you know, I love looking at them on the wall like this. So we have one more, and it's probably my favorite. So I'm not going to lie. This is my favorite, um, hands down. You know, the kit that the elf sent over is right up there with it. But this one just makes me smile. I love seeing it sitting on a shelf and, you know, the video looked fun with it driving around, but seeing this thing actually running around is absolutely hilarious in person. The little floppy ears, the legs hopping up and down as you're driving around, it's just, I have nothing like it in the collection, and I doubt if I have anything that's this much fun just to sit and look at or to drive around. You know, it could go half the speed that it goes, and I would still be laughing the whole time. And of course, we had to have Lloyd and Harry hanging out with him so they sit up on the shelf with him but this one is a completely custom body um there was a lot of work that went into this um i had no idea what i was doing how i was going to do it and how it was going to turn out when i started but i think it came out awesome so one of the big differences between this and the stock van is this nose actually comes out about an inch and a half two inches further than the dodge nose comes out so i actually had to custom make a wooden piece to fit in here to bump the nose out and then there's actually another piece of Lexan bent and fit to it um, to give it and it's hard to see on the camera but it actually gives it the two-dimensional you know top part of the muzzle and bottom part of the muzzle down there has his little tongue his little black nose and of course you know the the floppy ears and you know I actually sewed it actually has the little mohawk running down the center of it here 
the tail is flexible and can move around if it rolls over. The wheels lift up like it did in the movie, so when he filled it up with gas, he had to prop the leg up to put a gas in it. Now on this one, I actually did paint and weather up the wheels. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the wheels are actually kind of rusted up and old gnarly looking because in the movie, it had kind of old nasty steel wheels on it. Uh, custom made the Mutz Cuts um, logos for the sides, stuck those on. It still has a sunroof in it, um, so I basically cut everything out to do that. Um, again, it was a very long um, process to get this done and making it look right. Um, thankfully, it all kind of happened right the first time. Um, there was a few things that I had to go back and tweak and stuff, but, you know, hand sewing stuff, um, you know, adding the the legs actually have a piece of Lexan embedded inside of them so they're they're rigid but the top of it's floppy so they can flop around but they maintain their shape the ears are just squishy um, I wanted those to stay squishy the tails the same thing it's um, two pieces of Lexan smashed together and mounted down to the body with a piece slid over it um, for the tail but you know this thing just I, I absolutely adore this thing um, now, I could have done a little bit more to it. It does not have tail lights, and it, I did not put the headlights in it. Um, just because, you know, I, it came out so cool looking, I did not want to mess up the front end. And, you know, you're not looking for lights on this thing. You're watching, you know, <laughs> you're watching it do that as it bounces around. You're not paying attention to lights or anything on it. So this is, this is my favorite all-time custom builds so far. Um, well, you know, custom, custom. One of my favorite builds is probably the the Grand Hauler, but you know, as far as making something my own, um, I had so much fun doing this. And you know, I looked online, I looked on YouTube to see how many people had done it. I had seen some pictures of other Mutz Cut stuff. I've seen like tracks of slashes done in Mutz Cuts, um, but I really couldn't find many pictures. Sorry, I'm fiddling with the wheelie bar. I didn't really find many pictures of the. Um, Mutz Cuts lunch boxes when I made it. Now, obviously, when I put it out, be like, oh, you copied my buddy. Oh, my buddy did this five years ago. And I'm sure a lot of these have been done, but, you know, I had, I had searched YouTube. I didn't see any videos of it. So, you know, if you guys are interested, links are down below for this build and all the other builds. So you can go down there or, you know, just scroll around the channel and you'll find them. All right, guys, so if you guys watch this on your Christmas day, thank you so very much for taking the time to hang out with me and watch me ramble on about my cool lunchboxes. I really appreciate it. Everybody have a wonderful holiday season. Everybody stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, and I will catch you guys on the next one. I'm going to go get some eggnog. Um, they also came out with the Mitsubishi can't say that word. 